Hello, my name is Gerhard Weber. I'm an evolutionary anthropologist at the University of Vienna and my speciality is the cutting-edge analysis of morphology of fossil and recent humans. I'm also one of the initiators of a new research network, Human Evolution and Archaeological Sciences, HEARS. Together with Israeli colleagues, we recently had uh, an important paper published in Science. Its focus is a new type of hominins from the Nesha Ramla site in Israel that questions ideas about the development of Neanderthals, which are commonly seen as a mostly European phenomenon. We start in West Asia, where the three continents of Africa, Asia and Europe come together. Nesha Ramla is in the center of Israel near Tel Aviv. Below the image of the excavation site here is the interesting stratigraphy of our hominin findings. They came from Unit 6. There were several dating methods used. Uranium series provides a minimum date of 100,000 years ago. OSL an upper frame of 170,000 years, but most of the dates from electron spin resonance suggest an age of 140 to 120,000 years for Unit 6. The tool industry is mid-middle paleolithic, thus more advanced than early middle paleolithic, which we know from Ms. Lea, the site where the first modern humans out of Africa came from. It uses a centripetal level 1 method, like the famous modern human sites Kafze and School. The fossils discovered at Nisha were a right parietal bone, um, some smaller pieces of the left parietal not shown here, and a partial mandible which included a very well-preserved second lower molar. We were applying different quantitative approaches to the parietal, the mandible and the tooth. Our samples were diverse and tailored for the respective anatomical element, comprising Homo erectus, African and European Middle Pleistocene Homo Neanderthals and early and recent modern humans. For an isolated parietal, we invented, for instance, a new approach, the angle between coronal and satellite suture meeting at the landmark breakmar. Homo erectus African heidelbergensis are perfectly fitting the value of nature. Neanderthals do so only at the bottom range and Homo sapiens not at all. Nature thus comes out as quite archaic. Looking at the bone thickness with the help of thickness maps, there is a clear difference between modern humans neonatals and more ancient hominins. Nesha is well comparable to some Homo halbergensis such as Petralona, Atopoyaka, or Swan's comb. The core of our analysis are, however, the geometric morphometric approaches that we developed over the last decades using a multitude of landmarks and semi-landmarks to compare large samples and detect even subtle shape differences. We adopted this approach for isolated parietal and we can also use these methods for isolated molars. Central is the idea to have some fixed landmarks um, here on the cusp tips and deepest points on the tooth ground and use curved semi-landmarks on ridges and perimeters to obtain as much information as possible. In the principal component analysis of the parietal, early and recent modern humans are perfectly separated to the right. Left top are Neanderthals and Pre-Neanderthals and left bottom are Asian and African older forms. Nesha clusters again with them, showing a quite archaic shape. That result is confirmed by our phylogenetic tree analysis using neighbor joining. The Nesha parietal is positioned on the line leading to African middle places in Homo, close to the splitting point from Homo erectus and not far from the European middle Pleistocene Homo and Neanderthals. For the mandible, we get a bit different picture. Nesha and Taboon, another interesting fossil from Israel, are close to Neanderthals and European middle Pleistocene Homo and pre-Neanderthals, far from early and recent Homo sapiens, as well as far from Homo erectus and African middle Pleistocene Homo. The molar finally plots with Neanderthals from Europe, one being the earliest, Ehringsdorf, about 230,000 years old. 
So all together we find a mosaic of features from a very archaic neurocranium to an intermediate mandible and a quite neonatal like molar. In Israel there are some other fossils and localities such as Kesim Cave, Zutir and Tabun Siwan which yielded neonatal like morphologies but not classic neonatals. They go back as far as 420,000 years. Now with nature we think that there was a paleodeme existing with Neanderthal traits that contributed to the common Neanderthal evolution. In Europe, for instance, in Atapuerca and Petralona, there are specimens morphologically near the West Asian Nesha paleodeme. In Asia, there are non-typical Homo erectus findings echoing Neanderthal morphology such as Sampung Makan, Maba or Tongzi. We can express the reasonable suspicion that these populations could have been in contact. To sum up, the Nesha Ramla <coughs> fossils could represent late surviving examples of a distinct Southwest Asian Homo group predating the classic Levantine Neanderthals from Amud or Kibara. This might explain also the early gene flow between modern humans and Neanderthals, suspected to be more than 100,000 years ago, if you remember that Mislea, the first modern humans, have been already in the area. And it could explain the high morphological variation of the later uh, Levantine modern humans, such as Kafts and School. Finally, Studies of the European Atapuerca and Ara group pre Neanderthals suggested the existence of more than one Homo lineage in Europe and the contribution of a Levantine group. We'd like to thank all these colleagues uh, for their support and access, and access to material scanning and discussion, and of course, our funding parties.